Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's Let's Talk Dairy. So thankfully, I'm coming from the comfort of my office today, um, not out in the road trying to get a signal. Uh, and thanks to those of you that stayed kind of waiting for me to actually activate the webinar last week. So this week, I'm going to, I thought, thought it was appropriate maybe to just refresh the memories in relation to um, on-off grazing. Uh, probably often associated with mainly talking about it in the springtime, but it's obviously part of, of the grazing repertoire. At this time of the year also so um given that we got such heavy rain now it's been per periodic and sporadic i suppose in some cases but i know west cork has been hit quite hard with heavy rain in the last couple of days um in the, the north cork area that i'm working in and living in um we got hit with very heavy rain sunday evening somewhere in the region of 35 to 50 millimeters in the course of one day which is obviously an inch and a half to two inches which is a lot of water in in, a, in one day Surprisingly enough, I suppose Monday morning, uh, ground conditions weren't bad considering the level of rainfall that was there. However, it has changed the dynamic somewhat in relation to actually approaching grazing now for the, the next number of weeks, I suppose. And in reality, I suppose there's probably really only any, depending on the stocking rate, I suppose, but if we assume that the vast majority of farms are somewhere between two and a half to three cows to the hectare and maybe higher, uh, in the vast majority of cases, we probably only have less than 20 days of grazing. And that even could be grazing by day, potentially at this stage as well. So um, while I suppose the objective maybe in the springtime is maybe to get out day and night, uh, we, we may be just looking at a scenario where we're talking about just grazing by day. Um, but just if ground conditions are gone tricky, on off grazing may have to be the solution. OK, so. I have two little things that I want to share with you here. Um, I'll have to swap over screens in a minute just to give you the, the um, what I'm actually talking about as was so in a minute. Um, just why do we want to go on off? I suppose all along ground conditions have been quite good. Um, September was very kind. John McCabe would have said it on, uh, on a webinar or on a podcast with me there recently that ground conditions through the month of September in the west of the country had been very, very, very good and solid so that they've actually had quite an easy run of it, I suppose. And at that stage, very little back fencing or anything being done um, in order to graze out paddocks and not, no damage pretty much been done, basically, because ground conditions were so good. So ground, as I said, has changed probably to a certain extent or the overhead conditions have changed more so than the ground, I suppose. Just a lot of heavy rain. Um, and I suppose the kind of the softer days, shorter days, all contributing to ground just not drying out. Looking at Metairn uh, information there, they would have had a lot of ground as being up to kind of soil moisture deficit or no soil moisture deficit. So basically trafficability becoming a challenge. And look again, I suppose it has to be acknowledged that there are farms here now that are or maybe some of you that are tuned in today that you know your own farms best and Look, John Maher always says you can't make the decisions uh, standing in the concrete in the yard, and you do have to go out and get a look um, to see about possibilities. But there are days that you just have to give in, basically, and say that they're not going to go out today or they're not going to be out for the next number of days. And then you just have to attack then again when the opportunity comes. Long term forecast is suggesting that there might be a, bit, a period of settled weather coming towards the end of the month into early, into early November. So that may may offer opportunities to get back out again for those that are going to be confined to sheds. And as I said, going in by night at the moment is possibly a good thing. Depending on uh, your situation, you may be as well off to graze day and night for the next number of days and get finished up um, if you're on very tricky soil. But if you're on soil, that's going to straighten out again if you get a dry spell. Um, grazing by day might be the option to keep the grass in the diet for as long a period. So why we go on off, obviously, is to maximise grass intake. So if we're not out grazing, we're not getting grass in. Um, and again, look, uh, while it's more of a, an issue in the springtime in terms of maximising the energy intake, because grass quality is so good relative to any other feed, it is still fairly, it's still quite a high quality feed in the autumn time, even though it's slightly lower energy levels than spring grass. Uh, it's still a solid feed. And getting it in is obviously going to maintain milk solids and milk salads are quite good there at the moment um, from what I've seen at groups and so forth. So I suppose the big thing around milk salads is uh, quite often, or the, the whole milk salads and body weight side of things, um, what, what on off grazing is doing is basically allowing us to almost be at grass full time without the risk of the, the damage. So milk salads from the work that Emer Kennedy did on this, and I suppose it's kind of strange when you think about it that this is work that was done only a number of years ago. Um, 
that you'd nearly take that was it was there for generations but Emer only did this probably 15 not even 15 years ago I suppose so it's it's not it's relatively new in one way um so the milk solids and body weight are similar to having full grass access so that was the trial that Emer did she would have done comparison of um cows out by day and or on off grazing cows out full time and cows on on silage so obviously milk solids was better on the cows that were out grazing and um, be it full time or on off uh the advantage of the on off obviously is that it minimizes poaching uh, and i suppose one there's two other advantages to it then as well is that it sets up the farm for both the spring and the autumn so when we talk about it in spring grazing we're trying to get area grazed off to get ground back for second rotation and in the autumn we're trying to graze off so that we don't have but uh, a butt in the sward that's going to complicate things in the uh, in the springtime when it comes to grazing and also compromise growth over the winter period as well so good clean uh, good clean outs are important to establishing nice grass for the spring which is going to be easier to graze out as well so that's the the rationale for why we should switch to it when the weather becomes tricky cows out of the shed obviously then is a big advantage and everybody um likes to try and get that uh, li likes that scenario i suppose because there's less work around cubicles and i saw a very interesting um figure there recently from a person that has a cubicle cleaner the number of hours that were on the cubicle cleaner from just one winter uh is, is quite startling in terms of the amount of work that goes into keeping cubicles uh right and if i suppose if we take it in the context that those cubicle cleaners are actually minimizing the time that's spent at cubicles for that person it would actually indicate that the amount of time being spent at cubicles is quite uh, substantial and we probably don't give it the thought in terms of the time that is going into it so it's a, a time saver i suppose when you can get cows out of the shade maybe cubicles only have to be done once a day maybe so it's an advantage in that sense uh, and it's also obviously better for cows that they're out and about i suppose rather than being in the shade because they'll be in the sheds long enough really i suppose when you think about it the other big advantage, obviously, and again, a big and even bigger advantage, maybe this year, given that the slurry deadline was pushed forward a, uh, a week, and it said a year there, a week, um, there's extra storage requirement this year. And uh, everybody knows that for whatever reason, slurry storage, no matter how much you seem to have, it's it, it can quite regularly fill up. So any opportunity to get cows out to keep the pressure off of tanks is always welcome. OK, so on off grazing has many, many benefits, I suppose, uh, across the multitude of of angles on farms and, and obviously from your own head's perspective like it's just there's less feeding to be done obviously in that scenario it's not eliminating the feeding but there's less feeding to be done uh, if you're on silage by night there's less silage to be put in or you can the silage that you do put in can go a little bit longer maybe okay so grazing behavior i suppose is something that we can manipulate in relation to on off grazing there's a natural compulsion for cows to graze after they've been milked so after the morning milking and after the evening milking obviously um creates two opportunities to avail of that compulsion to graze if cows aren't grazing they start to wander you, you know that yourselves um and if they're not if they're wandering they're they're literally potentially eating with five mouths as the as the saying goes so they're they're walk they're traipsing around the field so as well as grazing they may be actually walking grass into the ground but it can be funny it can be quite there can be quite heavy rain um falling at the time and if it happens to coincide with the actual time that the cows hit the paddock they actively continue to graze uh, and the weather doesn't actually bother them when it starts to bother them is after the two to three hour period when they've run out of grass um and they've more or less nothing else to do they start to bunch and they start to traipse around the field as well so that's when the damage does occur uh, and look the two to three hours is the maximum or is the recommended timing and i think in reality people probably need to be looking at the likes of the backlash and so forth to make sure that it is a two to three hour boat with the best will in the world um time slips away i know people often let off cows they are to get them out in the mornings and go back maybe cleaning up washing up the parlor etc etc very quickly you'd see between washing up and washing out parlors and so forth an hour could slip by there you throw in on top of that then maybe going for breakfast etc maybe have to run into town for some one uh, an item or one thing or another and next thing very quickly are gone over the three hour boat uh, and that as i said is is contributing to damage being done so the cows start to move at that stage and uh, the backlatch works from the point of view that if you've the place set up in order for the cows to come back to the shed, they can wander back and at their at their will basically. So gap opens if they're ready to come in and they're waiting at the gap basically, they're in straight away. 
if they're content at that time uh, and there's no reason for them to come in, then they're not going to come in either, generally speaking, as well, that they'll they'll start to, to, to trickle in um, when they realise the gap is opened as such. Um, so as I said, if the day is good, you can actually leave them out. Maybe if the weather has been okay overnight and ground conditions are okay, you could potentially leave them out. But in the nighttime, definitely at this time of the year, it's probably best to let them back to the shed anyway if you are out by, by in the evening time as well. Um, so the cows actually adapt very quickly to the practice. They kind of get to know what's going on. They get to know what's happening with the backlatch. A lot of people using backlatch anyway now to let cows on for evening milking in particular um, so that they're not under pressure to drive them in, etc. And obviously the driving can impact on lameness as well. So um, there, like again, I keep talking about it. I suppose we've had re relatively good milk price here this year or, or definitely <laughs> relatively relative to any other year. It's been a great milk price year. And, and smart investments like the likes of the backlatch and stuff like that will make life easier for people uh, and uh, worth considering. Like So look into those um, as options that will help you in the springtime as well, obviously, because in, in springtime, that on-off grazing becomes more tricky because there's more work occurring in the yard as well. So um, it's an, another advantage that there is no requirement to go out. You have to go out to lock them out, but you don't have to go out to let them in. The practicalities of on-off grazing, I suppose, what drives it? There's two things, I suppose, in my mind, really, I suppose, access in particular, roadways, gaps. And I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, maybe in terms of, of in infrastructure investment that people could use. Again, coming back to the uh, spending your money wisely um, that's been generated this year. So roadways, uh, sport roadways, I suppose, in particular, um, a lot of farms have, have a, a network of roads anyway, but it's actually accessing ground. And I suppose what's really interesting from my perspective is on a farm on Monday, they're not too far away here from Moor Park. Very dry bit of ground, <coughs> good operator. Um, as I said, dry, dry farm, but there's four or five spore roads on that very dry farm. Um, so some people often think that this uh, these spore roads are associated with heavy soils or more tricky soils. But in this context, we have a, a very dry farm that's very focused on getting grass into cows um, early in the year and late in the year. Uh, using spur roads, which is li literally heaped mounds of stone. So just ra roads raised up slightly above the field. Temporary wire um, actually grassed over because the group that was there actually didn't even spot some of them uh, as we were going around. And then gap handles as well. So multiple options um, in terms of access to paddocks. So uh, as I said, they, they could be along the, those spur roadways or even just off the main roads as well, that there's multiple options to let cows in. Again, that's just to avoid over use of any one particular axis. Now, some cases, because of ditches and dikes and so forth, it can be, um, it may not be an option, um, but it, it's uh, it's something that people need to consider. And the other thing that's very important to consider, and I'll show it to you in a second, and I need to switch um, switch slides here in a sec, uh, is that the cow's natural compulsion again, and it's logical, is to go out the gap that's nearest to the milking parlor. So it, it's something that you need to bear in mind. And the other thing is that when you're on off grazing, especially in the evening time, make sure that the access point out of that paddock is easy to get to. So again, it sticks in my mind. John Galvin, farmer monitor farmer on the Dairy Gold Joint program a number of years ago down in Dunmanway. Um, he just explained his way of doing on off grazing. And uh, he always put the cows at a grazing that was close to the front of the paddock, basically. So they were just off the roadway in an evening grazing or if if he was in a paddock that was tricky to get out of. So he he didn't have cows going in over a cow road, which, again, as I said, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and that they were trying to come out a narrow access point in the dark uh, or maybe just in the dusk, maybe late in the evening. He made it such that the, it was full access um into the paddock and full access out of it so they might have been going in at the end of the paddock and coming out at the gap nearest in the milking parlor then afterwards and obviously they'd full run out and they weren't pushing and shoving and trying to crowd in and maybe obviously in the dark potentially is that a fence will get knocked and then you have uh, a problem trying to uh, figure out what, where cows are Co some cows coming in some cows getting stuck outside of the wire that kind of scenario the other thing I suppose that's important when we switch to the on off and look, Martina Gormley's talking all the time about trying to pull back milking times as much as possible to finish the working day in reasonable time. Don't uh, don't be milking too late in the evening if you're going to go on off grazing. And I suppose if you are milking late in the evening, it just is off putting from the point of view of grazing because it means that you're 
um, going to be maybe coming back to let Cole back in. But as I said, Backlatch can do a lot of that for you anyway as well. But uh, ideally, just don't be milking too late in the evening because if you're going for two or three hour bouts, Cole's going out at five, they're back in by eight. Cole's going out at eight, aren't going to be back in till 11. And that's just extending the day very long if if you are going to be going to the yard to check on cows or anything like that um, and it's just trying to help you help yourself basically to to get a bit of time off uh, and and have reasonable time off as well in the round of the day that you just don't milk too late okay so that's uh that's that's the, the last piece i suppose that i want to show you as i said is um i'll just switch over here now a second i suppose just the principles of it so there's two different ways of doing this i suppose in one sense some people, and again, a client that's in a, a group with myself, I know it does this very regularly. So it puts the cows in, puts them back to the back of the paddock. So it swings, and if you can see the course are moving here, you'll see it will maybe have a wire up or ready to roll out here. So, and he might use it actually to force the cows into the back of the paddock. Uh, and then he let them out over the grass, basically. So they will spend a little bit of time grazing that section, basically coming as they come forward, but they're coming out that gap. Next grazing, they go in here um, into the center back fence to stop them getting the access there and uh, the fence here to stop them grazing too much. And again, out this gap. And then the last grazing, they're going in at the front and uh, coming out again at the corner here. Reason for that is that obviously graze ground is more vulnerable to damage than uh, ground that has grass on it. So by walking them in over it, and, and look, it's important probably here that roadways are good and clean here as well, uh, so that by the time the cows hit the paddock there, that they're not going to actually be dragging a lot of muck and dirt in over grass, which will uh, result in a lot of refusals there. I suppose the, the cleaner way in one sense um, is to do the cow walk. So you create the maybe one to two meter wide uh, passageway down along and graze um, either from the back if you wanted to or from the front you can do either or here because you're accessing uh, in and out off the cow roadway again it's very important to point out that the farmyard in these examples is to the right uh, and that the access point is nearest to the farmyard so if you're going to have an access point here it's going to be very difficult to get the cows if your farmyard is off to the right hand side to go back to this point and actually come out a roadway here they're going to actually naturally gather at this site here uh, because their compulsion is to head for the farmyard and their geography is telling them that this is the site of the paddock they need to be at it for, for that to happen. Uh, and if you have cows in a scenario where they're in a paddock in, in the dusk or the dark, which is now ca the case in the morning actually, as well as the evening, they're going to be gathered here. They're not going to find their way out of this kind of a situation. So as I said, referencing John Galvin's uh, approach to it there, he would make sure that basically at, in an evening time grazing that the cows are going to be in this scenario here so that they can just get out that gap straight away and back into the yard. So um, I think I actually I glossed over the water piece there a second ago. So look, um, I suppose in February, water isn't a huge issue because cows aren't producing a lot of milk. And you could maybe make the argument that cows um, aren't producing dramatic amounts of milk either now at this stage. And if they are on three hour boats, that they will have access to water or they should have access to water while in the in the shade anyway that before maybe coming out uh, and also then that they'll have access when they go back in again so if they don't have access to grass or sorry to water um during the course of that grazing boat uh it may be not the end of the world i suppose if you can make it in such a way that they do have access it it is useful I suppose the problem is if they're traipsing back and over to a water track again, going up, maybe going over grazed ground, the potential is that they're going to start to do damage in that area. Uh, some see, I, I probably I've seen several different options where people may be using mobile tankers um, that they have on a quad, maybe that they move along uh, to give the water source to the cows. I've seen uh, kind of a, a 200 litre barrel converted into a water trough that's on a sleigh basically that's again been pulled with the quad around the place um, so there are look there's some great ideas out there I suppose there's nothing um, spectacular I suppose um, that I've seen yet and, and there is work in that um, so I suppose maybe longer term again people may be thinking of opportunities to put in extra water troughs in different places to increase capacity for for on off grazing um, at the shoulders of the year. Uh, and I suppose the other thing then, the final piece is that cows obviously need to have a, a desire to graze. And as I said, the natural compulsion is to graze. 
if they are uh, just after being milked. However, if they've had access to silage for long periods of time uh, prior to grazing, then obviously they have quite that the kind of, the, I suppose, the fullness of their stomachs is probably uh, they're busy ruminating on the silage that's in their stomachs so that they don't want to actually uh, want to graze as much. And again, the, the capacity is there that they will start to trap at that stage again. So just, I suppose, if you're on off grazing during the day, um, obviously not having access to silage early in the morning before they go out, um, or maybe just before milking either that they've run out of silage from maybe two or three o'clock in the morning that they're they're keen and, and looking for um, grass when they do go out not hungry that's important that they're not hungry we're, we're just, just trying to create the edge on their appetite basically so that they want to eat I suppose it's no different to uh, ourselves if we're after eating something already and somebody offers you more food you have less compulsion than if you're um, if you're not after eating at all so um again just try trying to get that right maybe it can there can be a little bit of trial and error in it and again just the methods that people are employing to stop cows getting access a lot of people may be using uh head head rail spaces for maybe cow standing while they're waiting to go out and so forth simple enough little things like um lockable barrier or oh, well lockable barriers are the expensive option i suppose I've, we've seen a couple of very simple uh approaches maybe just one link of of a uh, bear basically dropping down across the feed barrier to stop cows uh, getting access out. I've seen feed barriers that are turning down as well that lock out or stop cows reaching out to silage. And then I suppose the, the less uh, appealing option is probably pulling back that silage, having something that you can use to pull back the silage to, so that they can't access it. So I would say um, ways of stopping cows getting access to the silage um, after milking if they're waiting to go out it would be important in terms of contributing to active grazing behaviour post uh, um, release to the field okay so again look it's uh, as I said it's it's only for a couple of days probably as I said there's there's hardly a month in this now I would say and most people are going to have to have the farm closed by 7th or the 15th of, October, of November to make sure that they have adequate grass for the springtime so there's there's maybe only what, 10 11 days left in the month maximum 15 so there's about a month and as I said to maximize the amount of grass in the diet for the longest period of time it may be worth considering going in by night anyway to stretch out what grass is left uh, and as I said also then I suppose counter argument to that is if you're on heavier soils and as I said John McCabe said it on a podcast recently that there are heavier farms up in the western territory that uh, will actually go hell for leather now to graze off the farm before the end of the month because uh, bonus territory would be November if they can get some grazings in in November well and good but they want to get the farm cleaned off in the month of October as much as possible to have it set up for, for spring grazing. So just uh, as I said, that's a, a kind of a refresher in relation to the on-off grazing uh, and how it applies for autumn uh, grazing. Thanks for tuning in today and we look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you.